Okay? You know if you're an anointed one. Freedom and wholeness. You know if you're an anointed one. You know if you're a friend of God. You know if you are someone who enjoys certain protections because you do the right things and you do things right. That's all you have to worry about. Doing the right things and doing things right. Woo! The truth will set you free. This means it is time for you to come out of the closet. Shall set you free. It's time for you to come out of the closet. It's time for you to step up and take your rightful place in the cycle of life. Greetings, greetings. Welcome initiates and butterflies in transformation, just like me. Welcome to your word, your daily healing inspiration, and your Christ seed. Welcome to all my emissaries of light, my way showers, my 144, and my galactic aspirants. You are with Tunisia Ali, helping you to gain clarity, up-level your mindset, and clear and heal energetic blockages. You were born to use your sword of truth where your garments of righteousness, in fact, the whole armor of God so that you can manifest the glory of God on earth and within yourself by whatever God is in your world. We all exist in the Garden of Eden for those who know. This is the place and space that keeps you aligned with the divine where all comes in due time. Let's go ahead and let's get gritty and greedy. Transcend the matrix, make the ultimate sacrifice, and live the one true reality. SubhanAllah. Hallelujah. Change the world and let the light shine bright. The real righteous ones always welcome, win. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Spiritually Initiated and Crowned. You are here with Tunisia Ali, your reality alchemist, and your certified life purpose coach for the specific set of individuals that consider themselves initiates or the spiritually initiates. I am here to illuminate the pathways to the divine so that you can manifest the glory of God. That is you. Okay. Let's get into this reading. I'm feeling the energy of doing a reading. Let's take a few moments and all I want you to do is just to take a deep breath. For those of you who are true initiates, victory pose, please. Victory pose, victory pose, baby. Victory pose. Take a nice deep breath, clear your energy, please, and say, life is beautiful, life is good. Woo! Life is beautiful and life is good again. I don't want to knock my beautiful flowers over. I had the most amazing birthday yesterday. It was out of this world. Glory to God. Glory to the divine, the most high. I am so grateful for the many blessings in my life. Be grateful for the many blessings in your life and keep an eye out for the video on the the run, the, the race, the cycling. Uh, I have some highlights from it and some important lessons that I learned and I am in the process of editing it and uploading it. I don't know if this is gonna go up first or if that's gonna go up first, but today's message is for the initiate. And let's talk about and define that initiate. That initiate is that light-seeking soul, that truth-seeking, enigmatic individual who knows that they came to this planet for rising and shining, okay? Who knows that they came to this planet with something special and it exists inside their heart and they know they've got to share it with the world. Oh, but before I get into that message, something that came into my, my heart space and into my mind that I need to speak with you all about before we get into that message is the power of your light and its ability to attract low vibrations from those people who are not like you, from those people who can't really appreciate who it is that you are because sometimes your essence can intimidate them or sometimes your essence, the, the, the very isness that is you 
it makes them feel uncomfortable with who they are, where they are, and in some cases, why they are. It is important to pay attention to those elements of the matrix that are always going to be around you. And sometimes, beautiful souls, the most unlikely of places, the most unlikely of places, your family, your friends, the people you look up to, even sometimes people who mentor you, people who have been assigned to you in this life to be lessons and blessings. Some people are just blessings. Some people are lessons and some are both. Keep in mind that before we judge, we want to always remember the humanity of man. We want to remember that none of us are perfect, that people are constantly having to take stock of their vibration, your vibrational frequency is not stagnant. It is either always increasing or always decreasing, which means you've got to be on it. Life is beautiful. Life is good. You've got to be on it every step of the way. And you got to be willing to go within and take yourself to task when you find yourself in a space that does not feel like the light that you actually are. So we give them grace. You know that you've been around people before who genuinely love you, but they have a conflict within them. And there's an aspect of them that is also jealous. I got to get this. Hold on. Okay, bye. I had to do that. They're sick. They caught a virus. They can't come in this weekend. Doggone it. Okay. So the thing is, they may love you, but they may still be suffering from jealousy. That's not a big deal. Jealousy is when you look at someone else and you have some kind of a low vibrational feeling about what they have, who they are, or where they're going. You feel left out. There's some low level resentment there. Um, you have an attachment to where they are in their life or what the blessings are that they have. And those blessings that they have make it difficult for you to celebrate that because you somehow, instead of realizing that because they have it, you can also have it. And here's a prime example of abundance in your life. You somehow, instead of being able to celebrate and wish them well, you feel kind of left out or you feel like, gosh, I wish that was me. Why is that not me? That's different than envy. You can straighten out the jealousy. The envy is what is very harmful. The envy is a serious spiritual disease because what the envy does is it makes you want what they want. It makes you hope that they lose what they have. It causes you to be in a situation where you are willing to create drama, trauma, chaos, and discord in that individual's life or to celebrate someone else doing that so that they may lose the blessings that they have. Erroneously thinking that you can cause them to lose the blessings that they have without realizing that anything that is theirs, baby, no one can take from them. And anything that is not for them, King Tut, Moses himself cannot give it to them because it is not for them. But in that short-sightedness, those feelings of resentment, dislike, hatred, discord, cause you or cause that individual to undermine you, to, to take deliberate action, to do things, to put obstacles in your path. They may start out as snarky comments, being coy. They may start out as, as, as what would seem to be constructive criticism, but it actually is a jab here, a jab there. It may start out with them actually trying to take something from you. It can start out with them becoming a mass distraction in your life bringing all kinds of misfortune to you through their dysfunction in their life. It can get to the point to where they actually steal from you. They take your mail from you. They do all sorts of things. They gaslight you. They actually team up with other people to undermine you or to take your blessings or to stand in the way of your upward mobility or just to steal your peace. It can come disguised in all sorts of ways. I want you to understand this, okay? Because we are of two worlds. You know, we talk about being in the world, but not of the world. We go over here. We do our thing with the divine, the most high. We get the codes. We get the, ex the directions that we have to execute. And then we come back into the matrix and we do what we're supposed to do. We pull out that sword of truth, okay? We take on the world. We take on the world, okay? Fearlessly with fullness of faith. Fearlessly and faithfully. 
We are instruments of divine will, which really in essence means you come here to make a difference and to help restore order in this chaotic planet that we are on. You came here for the sole purpose of doing that, which means you act in the interest of what is right, what is truthful, or what is righteous, what is truthful, what uh, exercises compassion. Yet sometimes you may find that you come into people's lives by the time they meet you, okay? By the time they meet you, you are their karma, meaning you are the soul that has come in to play the role of God puts oppressors over other oppressors, meaning God puts righteous anger and souls that can be inspired to act and to get that level of retribution that other souls before that soul were not able to get. Each person is given opportunity after opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to course correct, okay? And when they cannot course correct, God sends you in and you get the justice. You extract the retribution, okay? You travel the right-hand path. You travel the road less traveled. You take the narrow path because you take your instructions from the heart where the light is, okay? This is a spiritual organ. So by the time you come in, what they don't know is while you're there to get your instructions and to execute and to learn some lessons because you can't always be a sheep. You got to, you got to, you got to imbibe and you got to bring to life that wolf energy as well because you at heart are a lion. So while you're going in, being sent in by the divine for lessons and refinement and homing, they're coming in and meeting their test or they're meeting maybe their match, or they're meeting their karma, or they're meeting their demise, or they are meeting God in you. Because these people oftentimes are not believers. They're not believers, but when they meet you, they get some aspect of their karma. And in them getting that, and even in them before them getting that, because in order for them to get their karma from you, they have to be doing something unjust in the first place. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in their life in the first place, right? In those situations where this is appropriate. It may not be your love life. It could be a relationship at the job. It could be your child's track coach who's been inappropriately dealing with uh, students on the team. It could be anything. It could be with someone who has consistently turned out the lives of their partners, have taken from them, have taken every wife that they had to court for custody of the children, and then they meet you. And not only do you get custody of the children, you get the house, you get the rest of the bounty, and you get everything else that everybody else should have had before you. And while you may not realize that it was karma that was, was leveled out or there was balancing, a balancing that took place, you were nevertheless used to bring about or to be a catalyst for something that needed to happen, even if it was only for that person to have another opportunity to get it right, another opportunity to humble themselves, to look at the blessings that have come into their lives, to look at the multitude of ways that lesson upon lesson upon lesson was brought into their life in addition to the blessings that they asked for, but they turned a blind eye. And so in goes you. And through you, they meet the most high. Bam! And that's the way it happens. So even before that happened, though, these were the type of people that were jealous and were envious. And that's what attracted them to you. They saw something in you that they wanted for themselves that was not theirs to have. Okay? However that situation came about, it could, like I said, it could be your own sibling. Oftentimes, it can even in the worst situations be people's parents. It can be a close friend who is, oh, I had a, a lady who, who did a reading several weeks ago. It was the woman who she made her daughter's godmother. Can you imagine someone who now is trying to take your daughter away from you because they lost theirs and they don't have a good relationship with their daughter, but they want to take yours away from you. And they lie, they lay in wait. Is it lie or lay? 
They've lain in wait. Say lain, they've lain in wait. All of this time waiting for the opportunity to take something from you because they've always been jealous and you've been able to somehow, it seems to them, move through every obstacle in life. You got the, another guy after you got a divorce. Now you got the house. You got the job you wanted. Your life is going wonderful and they can't take it. So they need to, because they want to be you or they want something that you have, they need to somehow bring about some type of suffering and they need to justify in their mind what makes them the right person to actually do that. And so they seize on an opportunity to infiltrate the relationship that you have with your son or your daughter or whoever in order to bring about infighting, in order to bring about divisiveness. These people can do the unthinkable. So Here's the point here. You never want those people to change who you are. You came here to raise a vibration on this planet, to leave love and light, to heal people, and to pull out the sword and to start cutting up like that and queen of swords when it's time to kick ass, okay? You came here to do that, all right? You did not come here, though, to give in to a feeling of defeat and to allow someone to snatch your identity and to turn you into something that you were never in the first place. So what you do is you look at those situations as blessings and you bring it on because you know at the end of the day, no matter what happened, like I said, intro, the righteous always win. The righteous always win. The righteous will always be protected. It may take a little time for people to get their karma but whatever is the hell that is them or the hell that is their life, prior to them meeting you, they are still in that hell and they're creating more hell and more karmic consequences as a result of what they do to you. They don't deserve to change who you are. In fact, you have to celebrate those instances because it is during those times where you're able to take off the rose-colored glasses that you usually wear. And it is during those times where you get to feel good about the lesson that you got. And it is during those times that your faith is, if you're not, it can be tested, but if you're really lucky, those are the times where your faith is exponentially compounded and you draw nearer to the most high, okay? Those are times of blessing. Do not give your power over to those people who come in to betray you, who come in to destroy your life, or so they think, or who come in to bring about your demise, they can never, baby, bring about your demise. What they're doing is creating more of an inferno for their own volcanic activity, the very activity that is going to scorch them alive. Be blessed. Continue to be who you are. Realize that people will always be jealous and some of them will be envious and that when you come into contact with the people that are envious, use your previous experiences to allow you to not have to continuously repeat a lesson and go around and around on a hamster wheel and put the blocks up. Put the blocks up. Emotionally detach. See them for who they are because you know you have the gift of sight. See them for who they are and be not disturbed. And know that you're always protected and you're always safe. And when you're not feeling totally protected and safe, know that you're always being guided. You're always being guided towards something that's going to take you to the next level, to the next level, to the next level, and to the next level. There is nothing in this reality that can harm you. Not truly. Because you are pure consciousness. And you exist in a world where it's you and the divine. All of this stuff is an illusion. It's part of the test. It's part of the initiation. We talk about it. There's one initiation after another, after another, after another. Depending upon how closely you want to draw nearer to your Lord, there'll be one test after another, after another, after another. And with each test, more elevation, more rewards, more peace, more tranquility, okay, to the point to where you fear absolutely nothing which is where we all need to be anyway. So do not worry about those people who will almost 
you be the bane of their existence. Those people who watch you when you don't even know they're watching and you don't care that they're watching. Those exes that keep trying to text you and draw you back in. Those friends that are really not friends, that are frenemies. Those siblings who plot along with other people who are not your friends or are people who don't appreciate you, who plot with those people to bring about problems and bring about discord in your life, whoever they may be in the workplace, that boss who refuses to get off of your back, whatever it is, do what you're supposed to do all the time, no matter what, no matter what. You got a crazy husband, do what you're supposed to do. You'll be on the right side of things. He'll be hitting the curve before you know it. Always do what you are supposed to do. And as long as you do what you're supposed to do and you stay on the right side of things, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Isn't there a, a verse in the Bible that says, touch not my anointed? Okay? You know if you're an anointed one, freedom and wholeness. You know if you're an anointed one. You know if you're a friend of God. You know if you are someone who enjoys certain protections because you do the right things and you do things right. That's all you have to worry about. Doing the right things and doing things right. So that's my first part of this message. And I feel like I got to pull a few cards. This is from the Divine Feminine deck. And my hand is still hurting from that 35 mile ride. I could barely shuffle for some readings yesterday. It is, it's really, yikes. We're going to have to get this message another way, y'all. We're going to have to cut this deck. Here's our card. What is it? Rawness. Okay. Ooh, you know what this is? This message is saying to me, I almost y'all got to pause this video. I got y'all know I got to break out in song. Y'all know I got to break out in song. I got to do it, y'all. This is saying you got to be you, baby. The truth will set you free. Yes, baby. Woo! The truth will set you free. This means it is time for you to come out of the closet. Shall set you free. It's time for you to come out of the closet. It's time for you to step up and take your rightful place in the cycle of life. shine baby can't nobody shine like you you came here to do your thing baby can't nobody do it like you baby it's time for you to come out and stop hiding it's time for you to show the world who you are okay Woo! it's time for you to come out of the closet baby it's time for your light to shine y'all it's time for the rightly guided the chosen ones those of us who have come back to bring order to this most divine and mighty universe. It's time for you to pull out your sword. It's time for you to wear the shells of faith. And it's time for you to step out and show up and show out. No more hiding in the background. Speak up. When you need to be heard, speak up. When you see something that's not right, say something about it. You can be fearless because you have the backing of the divine. As I said, as long as you're on the right side, you have the backing of the divine. The truth will set you free, y'all. Woo! Rawness, it doesn't matter. How real it is if it's you and being in your authenticity allows you not to be a prison of what other people think then doggone it that's what you need to do no more hiding no more worrying about what other people think and what other people got to say we are soldiers we soldier for what's right we are here to bring light to the planet. And while we may be outnumbered, baby, we are never outgunned. And there is no need to have fear. 
there is no need to, to continually postpone what you came here to do. I am calling you forward to step into your light, to share your gift with the world. It may just be the fact that you have the most beautiful smile that you've ever seen. And as you walk down the street, you share your light and you heal people just by giving them a smile. A smile is also charity. Do you understand? <laughs> only one you reveal yourself to the world show people who you are your aura is bright and you came here to do the divine work of restoration restoration restoring order amongst this chaos and you do that just by standing in your life, being who you are, and not allowing these other low vibrational beings, these people who hate themselves and who hate the world and who hate seeing other people happy and who live as hypocrites among us, who, who, who hide amongst us and who emulate the things that we do in order to mislead other people. You came here to be seen, to be heard, and to be true to yourself. So it's time to rise up. It's time to step into whatever that light work is. Some of you have such beautiful auras that all you have to do is walk into a room and you change the vibration. Some of you have such powerful voices that every time you speak, people are galvanized, motivated, and sometimes brought to tears. Some of you have poetry, whether or not it's written poetry or poetry in the form of music that allows people to release blocked emotions. Whatever your gift is, you may be good with numbers, whatever it is, stop playing small. Step into your power. Speak up and be heard. Show the world who you are. Nobody cares what you, you may not think you're perfect. You may look at this and say, oh, her breasts are sagging and I can't really see 24, 36, 24. Is that what it was when we were growing up? What was that song? 24, 36, 20. I don't remember what it was, but you may be looking at yourself saying, well, look at all these imperfections. Look. Everything that you came here to do, baby, is already within you. It ain't nothing you ever had to learn. It's the thing that you enjoy. It's the thing that you're passionate about. It is the thing that you're most gifted with. It is the thing that you do with ease without even thinking about it. And it is the thing that has already probably gotten you more attention, accolades, confirmations, and affirmations than you even probably have taken notice of. Okay, so it's time. It is really time. On the bottom of that, we have intuition. All you ever have to do is listen to that voice within. That's all any of us have to do is clear those blockages, listen to the voice within. I can hardly shuffle these cards. And follow the light. And when those messages come in, listen to them, celebrate them, and take inspired action. You already know. Whoever I'm talking to in this message, you already know, you already know offers. You'll find yourself with a plethora of different opportunities that could change your life in profound ways. Protection. We've gotten this card a lot. And I want to go into this protection thing. Not only are your offers protected and the opportunities that were always yours, no matter where in your timeline they are, those offers and those things that are blessings in your life are protected. They're being held for you. Not only are the offers and the gifts and the blessings being protected, but you are being protected. Yes, you are being protected. What does that mean? That means what we talked about in the beginning. People can't hurt you no matter how hard they try. They may they may try to delay you and those delays turn into lessons that ripen you. It's when you don't leave after you've gotten the lesson that you delay your own blessings. But everything that is yours is being safeguarded. You are being safeguarded. I don't know why I 
I love that movie, The Book of Eli. It got to where he came out and he knew they had guns. I think they were behind him and they just started shooting and he just started raising his hands up and he was just dodging the bullets and nothing was hitting him like, you have to be willing to be fearless. I've told you before, an important part of manifesting your destiny, baby. In addition to using your free will and deciding to consciously take up the responsibility of the anointed or of the righteously guided or of the chosen or whatever it is. In addition to that, you have to understand that the degree of your faith is the degree. What is that? There's a verse in the Bible that says, according to your faith, be it done to you. That's what I talk about when I talk about manifesting. The relationship that you have with the divine, your relationship with God is the God of your world all by yourself. It ain't got nothing to do with what she, God is doing in her life or what God did for him and what God didn't do for them. It got nothing to do with them. I don't have nothing to do with you. If you think God can get you that house over there on the hill, you can have that house. I happen to feel like I can be at the top of the mountain. I feel like I got wings and I can fly. That's the kind of relationship I got. I believe I can heal my internals. That's the type of relationship I got. So guess what? Your God is your God in your world all by yourself. So, Part of that protection is understanding that you don't have to be hurt. You can't be hurt. That you don't have to be in a mindset of, oh my goodness, what is going to happen if this, what is going to happen if that. That's not to say that you don't move with a certain amount of strategic maneuvering. That's not to say that you don't move sometimes in silence and that you don't take practical measures. But what that is to say is that you enjoy as long as you're on the right track, you will always meet your goal because your goal is connected to the goal that the divine has. Your will is being aligned with the divine will, period. If your will is not aligned with the divine will and you're moving in ego, then you got a problem. But when your will is aligned with the divine will, you are afforded angelic protection, legions of high vibrational force fields around you, covering you, protecting you. There's no greater protection than you can have. You don't need a gun. If that's not your thing, you don't need a gun. If that's not your thing, you don't need bodyguards. If that's not your thing, you ain't got to be looking over your shoulder if that's not your thing. You can move fearlessly and you can know that as long as that you are doing what you're supposed to do and every step that you take is ordered and that all of your intentions are sincere intentions in the name of the Almighty. You're going to be fine, whatever you do. And as long as you're doing that, you receive the blessings and the levels of prosperity that are your heart's desire. You will always be taken care of. It does not matter what is going on out here in this world around you or anybody else. So that protection card is a serious card. I'm going to pull one more card. You're protected against, it says, any negative or evil people, forces, or entities. Entities, any attempts to plot against you will not work. They just won't work. It might look like they're working out here in the real world, but they ain't going to work. They're not going to work. It just it doesn't happen. One of these days, I'm going to share the stories that I have with you all that are proof of the fact that no matter what comes against you and how crazy it may look and how fearful you may even be before you come into the knowledge of who you are. Because we are modest souls. We're humble souls, most of us that are in this space. It's not something that you brag about. It's not something that you even really looked at it and saw the relationship of what was actually going on. It may take you years and decades before you realize, you know what? Every person that did something to me, their life didn't turn out well. It's been one disaster after another after another. Like, oh my gosh. It may take you some time, but when you go back in your mind, if you are one of the people that vibrate with this, this channel here, you will know. And it does not matter what things may look like until those people atone ask for forgiveness from the divine or from you or however it's supposed to work. They're not going to, you know, what she said in, in, in the color purple, until you do right by me, shout out to uh, Sheila, right? 
until you do right by me. What she say? Everything you done done to me done already been done to you. Or until you do right by me, ain't nothing you touch gonna work. It just is what it is, y'all. I have seen this decade after decade. We got this soul food. We had this too. Watching what you eat. Watch what you feed in your mind. Be mindful of the thoughts. The times that we are living in now, you are manifesting things like whiplash. Like things are manifesting so fast. The boomerang effect. What you send out is what's going to come back to you. If you spend your time complaining, if you don't count your your blessings, if you're not willing to be patient while things are orchestrated on your behalf, if you're not willing to acknowledge the blessings that you already have and the ones that are coming into your life, you're going to have a lot of difficulty manifesting the beauty of the life that is actually a part of your destiny. You have to use your free will agency and take control of your consciousness and what you feed your consciousness, what you feed your body, what you dwell in emotionally and mentally, all of it. This last message is money. Expect an unexpected increase in your finances. You may receive a windfall. Money is flowing to you easily during this time. Now look at this. You got offers coming in. You got the fact that you are protected. We got this rawness and this intuition. Let's sum up this message here. You have mega blessings coming into your life. Things trying to come in to make a way for you. Even if for some of you in this situation, you don't feel like there is a way. Or even if you don't even think you're looking for a job, you think you're doing okay. Blessings are abounding. Blessings are coming into your life and you are amidst all of the major markers of prosperity. And money just happens to be one of them. So if you've been having a rough time with money or something's going on with your money, let's say you have slow money or there's delays in your money. Maybe people owe you money. They're not paying you your money. Maybe you got accounts. You're an account rep and you can't seem to collect on what you need to collect on. Stay hopeful. Something is coming in, a gift, something that is bringing you bounty, some sort of a proposal. Something is coming in and it's protected. But guess what? It's going to come in when you are authentically in the energy of who you were created to be. Do what it is you know you came here to do. Don't delay. Don't delay. Don't delay. Follow the signs. If there is something that you have been guided to do, okay, this is beautiful because underneath this, we have sacred union. This is sacred union within, but this is the lover of all loves, the spouse the mate of all spouses okay this is you following that gut following those divine breadcrumbs listening to your innards that neutral inspiration that comes in silently to drop that science on you to give you that advice to tell you what to do to take you in a certain direction listen to it. If you wake up with a certain inspiration, follow it. If there's something that's been telling you, you know what? You need to go ahead and finish that painting and take that up to um, that store in the mall and see if you can't put a few of your paintings in the mall. Or you know what? You baked those two cakes last week. They were amazing. And you know what? It's time for you to go over to those three health food stores and take some tasters with you and offer to actually be their, you know, cake supplier, or it's time for you to have that bake sale. Whatever it is, you've got to start moving on it. Time is of the essence. Things are moving very quickly. The divine is wanting to bless you, okay? You've got to have an avenue and a pathway for that stuff to come in sometimes. You need to make it as easy as possible, okay? And this card has no business being in here because it's not even a part of this deck. But I got to read it. It's not even a part of the deck. Learn from your past mistakes. Let me see if this is working. Learn from your past mistakes to avoid life's pitfalls and thunderstorms. Until you do, tread lightly. The wrong step may land you in deep water. This is a time again. Be who you are, put your foot down, 
Don't take no nonsense. Stop going over the same territory again and again and again, making the same mistakes that already taught you the lessons that you needed to learn. You already know these lessons. You're actually a master at it. Tread lightly and be mindful of how these things can block your blessings. Stay in your lane. I love you all, spiritual initiates. You are with the Reality Alchemist, Tanisha Ali, your certified life purpose coach, reserved for those who are spiritual initiates. I'll talk to you again soon. If you haven't purchased my book, Manifesting Your Masterpiece, you can get it on Amazon.